Do you have your own coat or do you share coats? <laughs> it's mine. Looking back, I can seem to remember that I was saying I was going to get my first PhD student through, and we did, and Prudence uh, is now a postdoctoral researcher. I've been in the pharmacy department. I'm going to dash in and tell everybody else, everybody who's been rooting for me and helping me. So, see you later. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Um, I was looking forward to maybe getting promoted, and I have. Uh, more papers. Um, yeah, we've got some papers out. But yes, that was the other thing, of course, personally speaking, Toby, uh, who is now one. <laughs> this is Toby. As you can see, he's not 100% happy at the moment because at the, end, at the end of the day, what he really, really likes doing is feeding. I think it's, it's been fine. Um, there's been a few comments from colleagues. They've seen me and there's always been very positive. Um, I was interviewed by the Times Hire by phone at one point because they found one of my videos um, on the website. Well, uh, it's been a long week last week. Uh, we had a grant rejection, uh, which we took us sort of three or four months to write and was based on about three years' work. Um, the Funny enough, we, we, did, we did several videos over grants and getting grants and success, but the rejection video seems to have been popular with absolutely everybody. Right. Dear Dr. Scott, and then it has the title of the grant, and it just simply says, I regret to inform you that your application to the Plant and Microbial Sciences Committee was unsuccessful. And that's had a lot of comments from academics and people I've never heard of, and people who are doing grant writing courses saying they use it. <laughs> right? They find it on YouTube and they actually use, you know, this is rejection and this is success. You do see comments such as, uh, this person has no track record, which is pretty bad when you're trying to do something new. I also heard, um, I don't know how true it is, but uh, I'm, I'm reasonably semi-famous at one of the research councils <laughs> because uh, they've all watched the video. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but uh, certainly I was at a meeting at the Royal Society in London and several of these people from the research council passed me by and they all, who I'd never met before, and all said hello to me and all knew my name. <laughs> we wrote a very good grant. Uh, we got it mentored by lots of people. Um, and it got turned down flat. <laughs> I think because it is an honest moment. It's an honest, you know, um, the reason I did the rejection video and also, the, you know, about success and things like that is I always wanted to give an honest opinion of what it's like to be uh, an academic researcher. And you've got to deal with the good times and you've got to deal with the bad times. And the, the bad times, unfortunately, outweigh uh, the number of good times. Um, and if you're prepared to stick at it, you will be successful. Absolutely essential in what we do. Um, it's no longer the case of the lone scientist working away on their, own, on their own because there is so much that needs to be done and you need experts in that field and it takes so long to learn a technique. It's also important you just talk to your colleagues and you talk to people about science because talking things over, like as in anything, uh, is incredibly important. And also, um, you suddenly discover that you, you know the guy who's sitting two offices down actually does something different, but uses the same technique, or has used that technique, or knows somebody. Yeah. Is there ever a day of a danger of it working the other way though, and and that flash of inspiration or that maverick side of you that could have led to a breakthrough being kind of doused or battered down by the committee conventional wisdom? No, no, I don't think so. Um, um, I mean, if you've got a big idea, then you tend to keep pursuing it and pursuing it and pursuing it until everybody gets it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, essentially what we do. It's our output. It's our product is a paper, right? Because it tells people um, what you're doing, what the science is about, um, what the breakthrough, particular breakthrough, big or small, is. Most of it seems to be here. Uh, yep. Um, What's going to happen to this now? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it across to one of my colleagues to check my maths and my thinking. Um, it gives you all the results, the evidence for that, and it's also peer-reviewed, which means that you send it to a journal and they send it to three or four academic referees who write a report on it. 
uh, whether it should be accepted, rejected, or changed in any way, maybe even suggest further experiments that for you to do. Um, at the moment it's called Absolute and Relative Determination of Protein Ion Mobility in the Gas Phase, um, which is a working title. So it's, in, it's um, and these, these papers basically form your, the body of your work. There's very, very few good and accurate depictions usually of scientists, usually for comic effect in, of some sort. Um, the only thing that's come close is an American series called The Big Bang Theory, which is being repeated over here now, uh, which is about uh, four male physics postdocs at Caltech in Pasadena. And the comic device is that they're a bit unworldly and a beautiful but unscientific girl moves in, moves in across the way and it's the interaction that goes from there and, uh, and there's been a few genius comic lines in there um, but that's probably as the process of doing science being the closest to it even though they've portrayed them as nerds right? I mean there's a certain nerdiness to, to, um, to uh, being a bit obsessive about something but um, if you actually go out and actually talk to people out there, I think you'll actually find the nerd count is actually surprisingly low. Well, I haven't watched anything on like CSI, or the only thing I've heard about it was when they, by computer, designed a monoclonal antibody which was ready in the next day, which I think if anybody in the science field knows anything about that, they'll just start giggling. I mean, that's, you know, several months uh, months work to prepare an antibody, and you can't design really design one in a computer yet. <laughs> um, I mean, certainly I've snorted my way through Jurassic Park and things like that over the years. Um, and most, most depictions of science seem to involve, you know, big flashing lights, big machines and, and such like. And uh, all, all the scientists seem to be incredibly well funded as well. You know, none, of, none, of them, none of them have seemed to have suffered a grant rejection. <laughs> That's your area of expertise. My area, great expertise, yes. <laughs> you were working in the wrong lab. <laughs> Alright, very good. That's all I have for you. Right. Thank you for your time. That's alright.